The Coin Toss Every time we toss a coin, it has a 50% chance to land on heads and a 50% chance to land on tails. This is a symbol of fairness in our society, everywhere from common parlance to sporting events. But let's pretend that your favorite team was forced to call tails every single time. Still, you should expect them to win the toss every other game on average. Yet out of a hundred coin flips, your team only won five of them. You might no longer believe the coin toss to be as fair as you once thought. You might even suspect that someone wanted them to lose. We like to believe that we live in a world that values fairness, but just like the results of our coin toss, our society reflects the opposite. Out of 113 Supreme Court justices, only six in our history have been non-white or non-male. And even though the nine current justices seem so divided politically, they may have more in common with each other than they have with you or me. Of these nine, four current justices have law degrees from Harvard, four have law degrees from Yale, and the other graduated from Columbia. Likewise, over 200 of our current members of Congress graduated from law schools. This matters because for the past 250 American years, it's elites like these who have been defining and enforcing the societal norms that the average American must live under. And by every calculation, those who fit outside of these norms are more likely to be arrested and convicted of crimes. Arrests and convictions that in so many ways bar deserving people from participating in society, including access to legal education. Add that to the fact that children of lawyers are 17 times more likely to go to law school, and it's easy to see how this cycle moves those who are within further and further away from those who are on the outside. Here at CUNY School of Law, we have a student organization called FILSA. FILSA seeks to correct this imbalance by advocating for formerly incarcerated and justice-impacted folks to be accepted into our school and by supporting them academically and pragmatically while they're here. We've provided first-year textbooks to formerly incarcerated students, written letters, taken meetings to advocate for their admission and continued enrollment, and edited writing assignments like memos and personal statements. Historically, Members of FILSA have been very involved with abolitionist work and tend to seek careers in criminal defense. Plus, for the most part, we really like each other. We have a lot planned for this year, and we need your help. If you'd like to get involved advocating for those most affected by an unjust system, email filsa at mail.law.cuny.edu. Likewise, if you've been arrested or otherwise involved in the criminal justice system, reach out. We can't wait to meet you and do this thing together.